now the session has to uh, start. And uh, it will please God to hear uh, that uh, the first speaker is a semi local, uh, ex local person yeah. uh, <laughs> It's complicated. Who will be speaking about symmetry def deflationism? Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, many thanks. Uh, Alexander, Kevin, and Charles for organizing this, this fantastic workshop. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, okay, symmetry the flashism. If you see, also many thanks for introducing this quotation mark. I, mean, I, I, I like the idea because I don't believe that we can go from science to metaphysics, so <laughs> my answer is going to be no. And this is going to be a, a, um, probably an, it's not a general argument, but it's an instance in which I see that this route from science to metaphysics uh, doesn't work. So with the motivations, the motivation is something like the following. <coughs> we have some symmetries in physics. Uh, I'm going to say something more about that. I mean, this could be represent the science part, right? It's why it's in, in green. And the other side, we have the ontology, but things we believe that they are out there. And inside, we have a lot of things, like uh, space and symmetries in different theories, uh, permutation of symmetry, case symmetries. It's a huge amount of different kind of symmetries in in the, in the physical fields, right? But on the other side, in ontology, people are concerned about the nature of space-time, uh, physical objects and their properties, uh, fundamental interactions, blah, blah, blah. And some people came to entertain the idea that, okay, probably there's some connection between the two things. The connection in general is, okay, we can start from symmetries and then we can go to the ontology. We can say something about, for example, the nature of the space-time if we look at the space-time symmetries. My question is, which is the justification for this route? Why we are allowed to go from one place to another? What I'm going to say, I mean, of, of course, this is many things to say, but what I'm going to defend is a humble view that they call symmetry flashing. <coughs> This is very, very close to what Angel was saying before about the different stances, right? I, I mean, I am definitely in the first stance, the, the flashing stance. So this is going to be a piece of that stance, right? Uh, what is symmetry the flashingism? Well, okay, just to keep it simple, I'm going to be, I'm going to give a, a more careful definition and specification of what I mean by symmetry the flashingism. But it's simply the view that the relation between symmetries, you know, the, the green side on, on the side, um, on the one hand, and the ontology on the other, this relation is very, 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 very fake, right? Uh, if you push me further, you say, no, there's no relation whatsoever. But I mean, here I'm going to be mine. <coughs> so this is the, the debut, right? I mean, the debut that, uh, okay, it's, it has many details, but one of the important implications is that from, science, from symmetries to ontology, there is no uh, straightforward path, right? I mean, the relation can be only uh, sustained if you have other assumptions. But it's not just taking symmetries and read off your ontology from that, it's doing something else. But the symmetry and the flashing is just a view in which when you assume some metaphysical assumptions, then you're going to read the symmetries in some particular way and they are going to be not so much informative about the ontology. <coughs> so, uh, okay, this is what I already said. The, the nature of the relation depends on some metaphysical assumptions. Uh, your views on law, the nature of space and time, etc. I mean, many people that were uh, discussing about the, the metaphysics of symmetries, uh, they usually, or sometimes they just think of symmetries in general, right? But I believe that it's, it's, you know, it's not that symmetries are in the air, just floating around, it's that they are always attached to some mathematical structure and within a physical theory, within some very strict definitions, and you also have to say something about the metaphysical uh, background of those, these, these things. So the other idea is that the justification of the relation between the, the symmetries and the ontology is going to depend ultimately not on the symmetries, but it's going to depend on other metaphysical assumptions. <coughs> so this is just the opening of the presentation, just give the, the general problem of the metaphysical problem of symmetries. Uh, uh, course grain map of the metaphysics of symmetries and then the view that I'm gonna defend in the <coughs> two of the of the version that I I could come up. So physical symmetries and the metaphysical probe. First of all uh, to talk about symmetries in general is 
kind of embarrassing because it's, of course, so many symmetries, different kinds, <laughs> global symmetries, local symmetries, geometrical symmetries, dynamical symmetries, blah, mathematical symmetries, physical symmetries. I mean, it, it, of course, it's just a very general term, umbrella term to refer to something like the following. Uh, prima, prima facie, there is a very abstract definition of symmetries. Uh, Okay, in the paper there are more uh, details about a um, more formal definition, but I think that this is uh, good enough to, to, to get an idea of what's in general a physical symmetry. They usually start with this uh, very abstract definition. You take some symmetry with, as a transformation that keeps some relevant structure unaltered. Usually the, the structure that we should keep unaltered is the space of, of solution, right? I mean, we have some dynamical equations, they're going to see that it's invariant under some transformation. There is going to, to convert solutions into solutions or non solutions into non solutions, right? This is the abstract definition. But okay, whoever have, has read uh, Gordon Bellot, I believe that this is probably a too liberal definition of, symm of symmetry, right? There are many things that uh, physicists usually don't consider as a symmetry that falls within this definition. So we need to, s to say something. Uh, more precise or stronger. Some people say, okay, we, we, we take the abstract definition, this idea that we, we should preserve the space of solutions, but also to add some formal of physical constraints. For example, that some uh, additional structure in the theory should be also preserved. For example, some, some uh, ob objects in the theory, like the Hamiltonian, the Lagrangian, etc. Also, we can impose on other constraints on, on transformations that we are going to implement with asymmetries, etc. But some people are still not very happy and say, okay, this is still too little. We need something stronger than that. Um, then some philosophers start to think, some philosophers and physicists start to think of something else about, I mean, so to add something to this definition of symmetries. And they are usually related to, uh, related to objectivity, redundancy, observation, detection, and blah, blah, blah. So what I, the stronger definition that I, 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 I can come up with right now is something like, okay, what I'm gonna mean by, what, what I, I'm gonna mean by a physical symmetry is something that satisfies the after definition that take into consideration some formal physical constraint that is going to depend on the theory, of course, but also some interpretative constraint, right? For, for example, the preservation of observational content. It could be, a, could be anything else, right? I mean, I am not uh, in this part committed to anything, like any, any particular interpretation of that. I'm just going to say that this is, for me, a strong enough definition of what is a physical symmetry. should meet all these uh, criteria. Right. Uh, so yes, but some 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 features that most symmetries share, even though you have this very leafy landscape. Well, I mean, there are some transformations that are particularly important for philosophers of physics. For example, gauge transformation, permutations, mm -hmm. space time transformation, etc. So I'm mean, going to focus on 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 these ones. When I talk about physical symmetries, I am usually referring to space-time space -time transformations or permutations or gauge transformations, right? I'm not referring to any other uh, weird transformation, right? Uh, but also, all these transformations apply first and foremost to formal structure. I mean, we, we you start to prove that some mathematical structure has some symmetries in a formal way, right? You prove that these uh, differential equations in from formulated in some particular language is invariant under some transformation that you also define formally. So first and foremost, it's a property of formal structures. And the formal structure that we are usually interested in are within a dynamical context, right? Uh, we want to know how things would behave if things were transformed in such a, such a way. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this could be debatable. I mean, I know that uh, the, the last part mainly some People have told me that, well, okay, we have the idea of symmetries of objects, symmetry of models, of symmetry of other things, but in general, I would say that everything, or almost everything, goes to, uh, boils down to some dynamical context. But I mean, this is not also very important for the main context. 
So what is the metaphysical problem? We have all these things on the science side, right? We have all these formal definition of symmetries. We apply some constraint because we want to single out some particular subset of this transformation. We, we give an interpretation of this, what this mean related to ob ob objectivity, related to observation, to detection, wherever you want. And now, as a philosopher of metaphysician, we ask, okay, which place this physical symmetry occupies in, one, in one's ontology? This is one of the questions. The other question is to specify the relation between physical asymmetries and one's ontology, right? When you have to see something more, it's not saying that just that we have these symmetries in the fundamental ontology and particles just pop up, right? Now, we have to say something metaphysical relevant about this relation between things that we are used to, like chairs, tables, blah, blah, and the physical symmetries, right? I mean, this is what. I'm thinking about the metaphysical problem of symmetry, which should give an answer to these two questions. A coarse grain map. I mean, there are many different positions. Usually, people distinguish between uh, epistemic and ontic view. I, am, I was not very happy with that distinction because I think that it doesn't recover very well uh, the nuances of different views. So I, would tr I try to give a, uh, a map or a difference view. And this is what I, I, I thought about. <laughs> what, 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 what they found is that people usually feel in the tension between considers these physical symmetries in the, in the sense that I talked about before as dispensable or indispensable. <coughs> uh, I don't remember who, I think it was Bruno before, was referring to um, Alexander Bird. Alexander Bird is one of the guys that believes that symmetries could be dispensable, right? <coughs> but all other people, I think that could feel in these different views. I mean, I, I don't have the time to talk about each particular view, but I don't know, I would place people like uh, Hugh Price or Gina Nismael here, if there is some, some kind of symmetry agentialism, like saying, okay, we have symmetries as a concept that help us to guide us in the world. Other people, like Jill North, okay, this is complicated to elaborate right now, but I really think that we can just make inference from symmetries to ontology, even though they are not part of ontology, but all the view very influenced is this one, the symmetry fundamentalism by Stephen French, uh, David Schren and other guys. Okay, there are different views, they have different things, but the, the, the main distinction between uh, being dispensable with uh, being dispensable with symmetries or indispensable with them. <coughs> the the role that I want to to run right now is something like the following. What I believe, or what, what, I, what I think that symmetry deflation is to say. <coughs> it's going that, okay, we, we start with something that is the symmetry fact. I'm going to talk about that later on. We believe that they are indispensable, but I see this is not per se a, commit, a commitment to an ontological view of symmetry. So we can be indispensable in symmetry, symmetries, but also epistemically indispensable. indispensable. And this is going to when I call it symmetry deflationism in two different versions, they depends on the on the background metaphysics that we, 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 we could have. But this is the, the role that I wanna I wanna I wanna I wanna go for. So what is this the symmetry fact? Now, I mean this is very trivial, right? I mean this is the modern physics presents uh, presents us with symmetry claims in the sense that I, I talked before, the, you open up any physics textbook, I'm going to say, okay, we are going to prove that this theory is invariant under Galilean transformations, and they got some symmetry claims, right? And we have these propositions in many different theories, from quantum mechanics to classical mm -hmm. mechanics, relativity, blah, blah. And we see that all these propositions, just taken in theoretical frameworks, very varied, all of them participated in the empirical success of physics. This is true, I mean, we have uh, some theories that work very well, and some of most of the theories involve some proposition about symmetries, and this is just a symmetry fact. And now we can ask ourselves, okay, what should we, what we should believe about that? These these claims are uh, dispensable or indispensable? Some people, like me, believe that okay, we should believe that these claims are indispensable. Indispensable in the sense that all the references to symmetries appear in the symmetry file cannot be, cannot be dispensed while preserving physics empirical success. 
So I am not on the, for example, Alexander's bare side saying we should wait for future physics to get rid of the symmetries. I think that future, future physics is going to still do physics with symmetries. But this is not, not really the, the, the point. And there's something very important about symmetries that we should preserve. But this doesn't mean per se that then we should be ontologically commit, committed to symmetries. And this is the distinction that I would like to, to draw. There are two ways in which we can be indispensable with respect to symmetries. One is being indispensable in the epistemic sense, and the other is being uh, uh, indispensable is in the ontological sense. Uh, for example, if you follow the Stephen French and other guys wrote, you are going to say, okay, of course they are indispensable, but they are indispensable because they are out there in the world. So there's this ontological background for indispensability in this sense. But no, I mean, I'm saying, okay, no, this is not the right way to go. The right way to go is just think of them as epistemic indispensable. Is here is where I, 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 I would place uh, my view on symmetries. So, what I mean by symmetry the flashing is? Okay, in, in, I mean, this is a general, very general definition that I'm going to go to the particular details, but first of all, I would say that all these putative references to symmetries appearing in the symmetry fact, in different theories across different domains, uh, do not refer to aspect of reality, but have an epistemic justification in terms of the systematic gain, uh, systematic epistemic gain for physical theories, right? And this, uh, this uh, epistemic gain is indispensable for physics to be physics, right? It's not just a convention, it's not just an instrument, it's something else, it's something that is really at the very core of the way in which physics has been done in the last, in the last centuries. <coughs> but the, 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 the two more immediate uh, conclusions are that, of course, I mean, in this case, we are not placing symmetries, physical symmetries, in the ontology, right? I mean, we are not saying that they are aspects of ontology, they are, we are not saying that they are structures of their ontology. They are just not in ontology, they are just, they perceive this epistemic justification. Then I'm going to say something that is a little bit milder on this, but prima facie, they are not aspect of ontology, or at least they are not aspect of a fundamental ontology. But also they are not guides to the theory, to, sorry, to the ontology, right? It's not the case that we can read, for example, in the Jill Norse uh, new book, she says that they are not part of ontology, but they could help us to, to read off the ontology from, from symmetries. Okay. This view implies that we cannot do that either. Uh, so this is one of, one, of, one of the things that I, 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 I came to believe when I was reading about the metaphysical discussion of symmetries is that, well, I mean, usually when, 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 you, when you look at the symmetries in the theory, they are not just defined in the air, right? It's not that we can just isolate it from a bunch of other uh, mathematical structure, right? They are usually properties of some differential equations or their property of that they are within uh, some mathematical structures defining uh, some space with some properties and so on and so forth. So <coughs> when, 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 we, when we go to the, to, to the metaphysics of symmetry, <coughs> I believe that we should also take into account our metaphysical commitment with the rest of the mathematical structure that uh, is, is making right, these this symmetries in the physical part. Uh, what I'm saying is that we should be very explicit about if you believe that symmetries are aspects you know, of ontology or they are up there in the world, okay, you should tell me what's your metaphysical view about the other things that are around the symmetries, for example, the laws or the, the space-time structure, the underlying geometry, blah, 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 blah. Right, I see that they cannot be isolated. They came, I mean, they come in a package, so to speak, right? <coughs> so, uh, I mean, my, 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 my claim is in a conditional form, right? It says, okay, it's not the case that you can have some 
metaphysical view on symmetries alone. What you can do is to give me your metaphysical assumptions about how, do you, how you are interpreting, for example, laws and the space-time structure, and then I'm going to tell you which is the right view or which is the more adequate view that for, for symmetries that you can have in this, within this metaphysical frame. Right? But it's not the case that, for example, you can just believe that symmetries are out there in the world, in the fundamental ontology, and remain silent about, for example, for example, the underlying mathematical structure or underlying the, the, the laws. So this is the, 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 everything should be read in this conditional form, right? Some assumptions with respect, some metaphysical assumption with respect to this point could, could yeah, could give us some, uh, some view about, about symmetries. In particular, what I'm gonna say is that Okay, when we have some assumptions about laws, about uh, the underlying geometry, etc., then symmetry diversity makes sense. Of course, if you, if you change these commitments, probably it makes no sense. But again, you, you, you need to tell me, okay, why are, which are your other ontological commitments with respect to this point? What, what, what is the, now to put some flesh on this? I believe that Symmetry deflationism is very comfortable within contemporary humanism and some way of um, some form of neo-Kantianism, right? I mean, again, if you read this, this conditional form, if you adopt something like contemporary humanism for whatever reason you have, well, symmetry deflationism is a good view. If you adopt something like neo-Kantianism for whatever reason you have, then symmetry deflationism is also a good view. <coughs> Of course, if you, if you reject symmetry deflationism, for example, you believe that they are out there in the world, then you should, you should give me what is the, the, the metaphysical background that is behind that, that, according to me, cannot be humanism or neo kantianism Again, I'm not gonna say that this is the, the right view. What I'm saying is that if you have this, con this conditional for this conditional, okay, we can go from one place to the other. So, Suppose that you are a human. Uh, a variety of what I call symmetry deflationism is symmetry epistemicism. And this is the view that I, I think that uh, goes along with uh, contemporary humanism. <coughs> so, again, conditional form. If you are human, for whatever, re for whatever reason, mm -hmm. well, you should uh, adopt something like symmetry deflationism, in particular symmetry, what I call symmetry epistemicism. And there's a, an, an analogy with, with how humans usually talk about laws. Uh, okay, now it's, everything's gonna depend on the human you're talking about, but in general they could say that the justification of law is both epistemic and ontological, <coughs> in that they are ontological because they are grounded in the regularities, but also they are epistemic because they, they, they play a, a very active role in having these best systems. Right. Well, I mean, what I, I'm going to place that. Well, I think that symmetries, if you are a human, shouldn't be quite different from laws. They are just a probably a particular kind of laws, meta laws, or something that is 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 in a, in a, in a, in a different level. But what what is clear is that for for humans, the ontology is whatever you have in the human mosaic. Uh, again, it depends on the human. The human mosaic could be could have different things, uh, local matter or structures, or just point-like particles, it depends on the human again, but it's clear that this is the ontology, right? Whatever is the ontology is the regularities that you're gonna find in the human mosaic. <coughs> and then, in, vir in virtue of these regularities that you just find in the human mosaic, you are gonna formulate some generalizations about how things behave in this mosaic. Some of these generalizations are gonna be theorems in the best system, but to be theories in the sense in the best system, they should have some specific epistemic virtues, like for example, this spirit of simplicity or having some uh, informativeness or explanatory power, whatever you want to call it, but it's, it's clear that the, all the generalization that we can have, there are some of them that play, uh, they also have some epistemic virtues, virtues and they are gonna be part of this best system. 
And the way in which I would, I would introduce symmetries in this framework is to say something like the physical symmetries are a kind of second order <coughs> generalizations or first order generalization. The first or order generalization are just <coughs> the theorems in the system that supervene on first order facts to get a symbol. In order to, to have these theorems in the system, to have some proposition, some generalizations that are powerful enough, that are um, uh, yeah, that powerful, powerful enough, and are simple enough, we need some symmetries. We need some symmetry reasoning to have these this, uh, this first order generalizations. But what, 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 what is clear is that there's a huge division between theory and ontology, right? Everything mm -hmm. what is in the ontology is in the human mosaic. But what we have in the theory is what belongs to the theories in the best system and whatever is playing a role in the in contributing to this epistemic virtues. And symmetries are there. They are not part of ontology. We don't, I mean, usually humans don't play don't place the 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 laws in the ontology, they play in the in the in the representational part of the ontology. And symmetries are also contributing to having this this uh, representational part. So this is what I think that most humans should accommodate symmetries according to their own commitments about other things, about laws, for example, about what they think that the ontology should be about. So very simple, symmetry epistemicism is just a view that the epistemic justification is in terms of the op optimal systematization of the first order generalization that supervene upon the human mosaic. Uh, and this optimal systematization usually balances simplicity and informativeness, um, blah, blah, contribute to, the ma to make physical theories best system. Okay, they are just then justified epistemically because they help us to have good best systems. Right. But again, they are not part of the ontology either. Neo-Kantianism, I'm gonna be a bit quick about that. Uh, it is a more controversial view but again, the justification here is not empirical, it's not ontological, but as many neo Kantians like to say, it's not transcendental. In the sense that symmetries could be viewed as condition of possibility for a physical object to be possible. And the core of this neo Kantian view is, of course, the concept of what we mean by objectivity. And they have a, you know, a, they depart from the tradition saying that physical theories are not actually, they shouldn't follow the copy theory, in the sense that we have something out there and what our physical theory try to capture. It's not the case. They develop this functional theory of objectivity, the, in which objectivity is just a, a property of the whole system, right? And the, the whole theory. And not something that is just out there in, 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 in the world. So, <coughs> and this could be controversial, I know, but. Some symmetries of these could be seen like uh, these a priori norms that are transcendental in this sense, in the sense that they just contribute to objectivity in modern physics. Yeah, they make that our laws refer to physical objects as objects and not to something different. I have the, this quote by by Wigner. We we have been talking about with uh, Chris before about this, uh, but I mean I think that again I'm not going to say that Wigner uh, is a neo-Kantian, but Seems like uh, he's going along with the new Kantian spirit, at least, in saying that, okay, what the role that symmetries are playing here is distinguishing between what they call our, uh, initial conditions and, and laws. Uh, to laws to be possible, we need to make the distinction, and the way in which we make the distinction is by symmetries, right? By keeping, for example, initial conditions invariant under some deformations. Uh, yeah, okay, this is more or the same. Uh, so, uh, what symmetry norma normativism would say? Okay, physics physics is not in the business of explain. I'm sorry, physics is in the business of explaining regularities, right? For need for it, we need laws. We formulate these laws, but for laws to be possible, we need to draw a distinction between the laws and arbitrary initial conditions and symmetries. At least some symmetries. Uh, Bigner refers to the space and symmetries in particular. They just play this role. They are playing this role to distinguish between these two things. But it's, it's clear that here we are. We have this this machine before behind physics, trying to give you some concept of objectivity and uh, some concept of law that is behind uh, this reasoning. 
Okay, so, okay, what's symmetry derivativism? Just this view that uh, in order for physics to be possible at all, in the sense that to refer to object, to physical object, symmetries are required to give, you, to give us some unity, systematic, systematicity, and permanency the physical object requires, because we need laws. Yeah, I'm going to the conclusion right now. So, final remarks. Uh, we start with this idea, right? Okay, we have some symmetries and the ontology on the other side. Well, I mean, I'll say, okay, I'm not gonna say that you cannot go this way. What I'm gonna say is that this, w this, this, this connection between symmetries and ontology depends on a previously adopted metaphysical frame. I can give you a different metaphysical framework about uh, space and time, about laws, or about physics in general, and I don't need to connect ontology with symmetries, at least in this straightforward sense. Uh, okay, this is just a one, one part of the conclusion. If you if you if you are a, if you feel that contemporary humanism is a good view, then symmetry epistemicism makes sense. If you believe, for some reason, that you are a neo Kantian, well, probably something like symmetry normativism makes sense. Uh, so. Okay, I mean, uh, for science and metaphysics, well, no, I said no. I mean, say no way. I mean, you you need metaphysical premises to arrive to metaphysical conclusions, and you have the metaphysical premises because you need to endorse other views. The thing is that you are not being very explicit about what are your metaphysical premises, right? And um, okay, there are different ways to argue in favor of this view, and I I, I have done it in, in different mm -hmm. papers. Two papers are going to be out very soon, in which I argue I argue against symmetry fundamentalism, and the other I argue against what they call symmetry um, inferentialism. But again, it's a way to see that other alternatives are less attractive, and probably other view is just to argue in favor of, of humanism or Kantianism, and then you are also arguing in favor of um, symmetry deflationism. So thanks. Thank you. I love your presentation. Uh, this is quite quite brief. Uh, so uh, you say that you may uh, what you outlined is a epistemic approach to symmetries. You didn't distinguish between symmetries for the sake of the argument and epistemic. I take it to mean that it's conducive to the production of knowledge. Uh, I understood it this way, uh, but I couldn't quite get why you couldn't go for. This a, a dispensabilist approach. Dispensabilist approach. Yeah. Uh, for example, for some mathematical symmetries, you may say that symmetry inferentialism, dispensabilist symmetry inferentialism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I that would work. And uh, that could be due to the production of knowledge, but when you have the knowledge of the physical domains, you can dispense with the mathematical symmetries. Okay. Or just the must fools. But now 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 it depends on what you mean by, by knowledge in this case. What I am arguing is not that they don't, don't provide knowledge. What I, I'm saying is that they don't provide knowledge about what is the ontology, where is the fundamental ontology, if you want. I mean, in that case, uh, you cannot read of uh, properties of fundamental ontology from, uh, from, from the symmetries. Though you, you, can ha you do have knowledge about phenomena or about different things because they contribute epistemically to to the way in which you want to know the world. Now, why I, am not, not, I don't endorse the other view, the dispensalist view? Well, I mean, honestly, I have a very strong answer to that. I would say that uh, I do believe that the symmetries are important, and I want to recover that in, uh, in, in, my, in my metaphysical view, and I want to say, okay, I cannot solve the, the uh, for example, okay. Um, okay, I, uh, you, if you are a dispositionalist, you have this issue with the symmetries and with this um, uh, over-determination of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the phenomena. And then you say, okay, probably future physics are going to dispense uh, with symmetries. I don't want to do that because I do believe that they play a very important role. I mean, again, I, I couldn't go through, through the details, but in, in, in the paper I, I said that how this reasoning really helps to um, empirical research and to formulate good physical theories in the sense that Physics requires to have good physical theories that could be uh, extended to different domains and that can be uh, universalizable in some sense. So, and symmetries, I think that they are very important in the same sense in which laws are. So, 
why I, 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 I still have some strong uh, yeah, commitment with symmetries, but I wouldn't go with, I wouldn't go down the, the dispensabilist, dispensabilist view right now. Amazing. Yeah. <coughs> so I want to ask you about like some specific symmetries and then <laughs> apply your argument. So let's think about a really simple case where we shift all the material contents yeah. of the universe yeah. over in that direction by a meter. Right? Yeah. So um, if we have a theory formulated in Galilean space time, yeah. then the shift yeah. will be a symmetry of the solution space. Yeah. If it's formulated in Aristotelian space time, it will not be. And I can understand <coughs> these symmetries as relations between possible worlds yeah. according to these yeah. theories. Yeah. Yeah. So, Let's suppose that I think there really are relations between possible worlds. Okay. Okay, so according to your argument, right, I apply modus tollens, right, with your conditional. Yeah, yeah. That means I must reject some ontological assumptions. So what are the yeah. ontological assumptions that I'm rejecting? Well, uh, for example, I mean, when you are saying, uh, okay, I mean, let, 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 let me see if, if, uh, if I, because what, what are you actually rejecting is a whole metaphysical framework that is saying something about what is the space and time, what is uh, the laws of nature, and blah, blah. But what I'm gonna say is that it's not really, I mean, you, you could have independent reason, for example, to keep something like uh, absolute positions, right? Metaphysical reason for, to have metaphysical, uh, to have absolute positions. So when you say, okay, I have this symmetry here, but uh, space translation, for example, Everything is smooth. They, voila! There is no absolute. Uh, there is no absolute positions. Well, I mean that, that 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 could be an argument, but there could be also a metaphysical argument saying, okay, we need metaphysical uh, some absolute positions because there is other things that could help us to 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 underpin some 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 theory. I mean, I'm thinking, for example, in okay, you could say something like, uh, well, I mean, I don't believe that. Um, let's say, for example. We have something like a special relativity. It's Lorentz invariant. Okay, but I have a very strong commitment with Bohmian particles, and I want a relativistic version of Bohmian particles. Well, I mean, I, I could say, okay, I have a problem because this theory is, is a, a Lorentz invariant, and it discards it, it discards a, um, a privileged uh, framework. But if I am Bohmian, I have independent reason to say, okay, probably this is not the right symmetry. This is uh, another thing, so I could reject this view. Right, but what right. about the examples that I mentioned? I wanted to keep the examples really s extremely simple. Okay, yeah, I mean, what you are, okay, what I would say is that you are projecting, okay, it depends on which is the particular metaphysical commitment that you want to reject. In that case, uh, yeah. you have, uh, okay, you are, you, you are having a realist, uh, a realist view on symmetries in some sense, right? Yeah, yeah, the I mean, yeah. Or you are coming different. But I'm saying, okay, then this is within a, a bigger, a bigger framework, right? I mean, this is defined within an, 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 a definite structure. But also, this structure could be, I know, uh, idealized, right? It could be some idealization in which I suppose that I can, I can move everything one meter to the, to the east, for example. And I have this space translation invariant, but the space translation invariance could hold only or could hold mainly in very highly idealized case. Why should I believe that these idealized cases are informative with respect to what the world is like? Right? I, I could have some uh, independent reasons to say, well, no, I, I don't believe in idealization, I, idealization so seriously. So you need to see something about how do you metaphysically stand, yourself, uh, stand with respect to, for example, idealization, because many symmetries are defining within highly idealized models, for example. And for example, you, you don't have interactions, you don't have anything, you don't, or you don't have non-conservative forces, for, right? Uh, I mean, the space relation bar in this case could fail <coughs> uh, if you have a, a space-dependent potential, right? Okay, uh, but they, okay, we can abstract that. Maybe we, we take this conversation like Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, there's that. one minute left, so yeah. I have time for one additional question. Or, no, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a few questions. <laughs> um, 
So I, I, I'm not sure about the, the content. content uh, yeah. Um, take you either. <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> um, so I have the. So first of all, to me, so I'm a bit of, I have a philosophical, philosophical training, and for me, symmetries are like unicorns. <laughs> I don't know what they are. So I would have loved to have at least one example, even if I, I wouldn't have understood it, just to have some, some sense of what symmetries are. Um, uh, but then you have that in the Kantian view, the Kantian view, they are a condition of possibilities mm -hmm. of the objects, right? Physical objects. Yeah. Physical objects, yeah. but not of our, our knowledge. No, physical okay, objects. So, but they, so they, must, they must be a metaphysically substantive in some sense to be a condition of possibility of, of those things, right? Uh, I don't understand how you can have epistemi uh, an epistemic attitude um, um, towards symmetries if the symmetries are a condition of possibilities of possibility of physical objects. But maybe I am confused there. Mm, yeah, that, I mean, I, I have called it um, symmetry normativism in the sense that in the Kantian, in the Kantian way or you know, Kantian way, there are some uh, regulatory principles or heuristic principle that guides. Uh, uh, knowledge or research. <clears throat> in this sense, I mean, so again, um, it depends now what you mean by epistemic. Uh, they are not epistemic in the human sense, of course, uh, but they are epistemic in this mo much more uh, flexible way. But I would just say that they are more like uh, norms, norms that prescribe how we, we should think about some objects, in particular physical objects, and when we are going to recognize a physical object as a physical object, right? And they are just uh, part of the how again, Cassidy's view about uh, the conditions for objectivity that a theory implies. Uh, so I, I'm not sure how how to read your 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 word epistemic in this sense. I mean, it's epistemic in this related to knowledge, right? In, in, in this, yeah, it's, it's, it's knowledge in the sense that there are conditions for having some specific knowledge, and it, this specific knowledge is physical knowledge, and there are conditions for that. But they are not part of the content. I mean, again, you, you have in the Kantian framework the constitutive principle, the heuristic principle. I mean, this is it's really a mess. I mean, I should be very more careful about that. But in, in my idea is that they are. They are guiding. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Very short break. Thanks. Thank you very much.